So guys, the list for those nominated for ministerial positions for this administration is out. It will shock you to know that they just want to use positions, you know, to repay those that helped them, you know, during this election in one way or the other. We know that Governor Erufai came out to, you know, tell the whole world how he influenced the Muslim community, telling them that the Muslim Muslim ticket was the best for Nigeria. And you can see today he has been included in the ministerial list. Honestly, just take a look at the people that this administration is nominating to see to the affairs of the Nigerian people. Anyway, no doubt Peter Obi is coming. We are winning back our case because we can continue recycling these politicians. We need fresh minds in politics. We need people with transparency. You can imagine having these old people, I mean these old politicians, being recycled every time. Anyway, no doubt Peter Obi is coming. So guys, let me allow you just take a look at this ministerial nominee list. Just take a look at this. In Tinobu's ministerial list are former governors, strong political allies believed to have worked for Tinobu's victory at the polls and a speaker of technocrats. Some of the former governors include Nasir El Rufai and Nason Wiki, who happens to be a card-carrying member of the main opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP. Also on the list, a former governor of Jigawa State, Abaka Badaru, and former governor of a Boeing State, Dave Umahi, who currently serves as deputy majority leader in the Senate. Um, yes, the list we have so far is not complete. And I'm hoping that by the time the complete list is brought to us, we'll begin to see holistically um, the Azadi Council, the uh, His Excellency, the, uh, the President of the Federation. Uh, but for now, we have our fingers crossed and see uh, when they bring the, uh, the rest of the list. Tinobu's list is also significantly dominated by former National Assembly members, mostly senators. Top on the list is the current acting national chairman of the governing All Progressive Congress APC, Senator Abakal Kiari from Bono State. Also on the list is Senator John Eno from Cross River State and Senator Sani Abakal Danladi. Former Deputy Chief Whip of the House of Representatives in Kiruka Oyenjo Cha from Abia State, Honorable Olubumi Tunjojo and Abuaka Momo complete the list of former National Assembly members on Tinubu's ministerial list. Former Executive Director Nexim Bank, Stella Okotiete from Delta State and the Special Advisor to the President on Communication, Strategy and Special Duties, Dili Alaki, also made the list. Alaki is a close ally of President Tinubu. Former Commissioner in Lagos, Wali Edu, is another right-hand man of the President on the list. A surprise package on the ministerial list is the publisher of Blueprint newspapers, Mohamed Idris. One of the lead counsels in Tinubu's case at the election petition tribunal, Latif Fagbemi, and the accord party governorship candidate in Oyo State, Wahid Adebayo Adilabu, also made the list. Um, the 28 names were received. We expected more than 28 because we have 36 states and every state uh, should have a nominee uh, by the constitutional requirements. But they are just sent 28 and uh, we're expecting more names. And from the 28 names we've received, um, we are pleased with some of the names we have seen. This time around, the 10th Senate is going to examine the characters, the, par the personalities, the experiences, the background of every nominee. Meanwhile, the Senate has suspended all its rules and even shifted its annual recess to enable it begin the screening and confirmation of the ministerial nominees starting from Monday. Omo Bazwai, Arise News. Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Bajadi Amila, says President Tinubu diligently reviewed the list before submitting it to the Senate. He called the list a balance between political shrewdness and experienced technocrats. But Jabi Amila says not attaching portfolios to the nominees is deliberate. Rufai. He had, as you know, uh, where he had 60 days uh, from the time of inauguration uh, as um, uh, stipulated by the in the Constitution. Um, the, he, had, uh, he has fulfilled um, um, that requirement of the Constitution. Mr. President took his time um, 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 to, to, to sift through those names. Um, he dissected those names uh, with a fine tooth comb, and um, that's what you've seen. Um, each and every one, 
I, I believe uh, of the persons on that list um, are worth uh, being on that list. But I really hope that we haven't missed anything that would uh, um, have necessitated um, any name not being on that list. Uh, but we wait and see. Um, it's a good mix of um, both uh, uh, people with political acumen and um, technocrats, as, as they say. So it's a good balance. Well, we find the list is out, well, partially. Oh, yeah, the list is out partially. Interesting times uh, met the 60-day timeline. Uh, only for us to see people we already know in the list. Which I feel very iffy about. You know, I expected more. I'm not really pumped up about the list, and I'll tell you my reasons. Yes, there's some technocrats in the list. Give it to them. Professor Pate is one. Uh, that's uh, currently chief of Gavi. Uh, he's highly respected in the public health circles around the world. He's been minister of state before. He's making a, an encore. You also have the likes of Wale Adu, which is another one chairman of Chapel. You know, uh, you have people like that in the list. You also have Adebayo Adelabu. Uh, there. Adelabu used to be former deputy governor of CBN, former PwC man. Uh, done very well for himself, ran for governor a couple of years ago under the APC, now the Accord Party, because he couldn't get a ticket from the APC. Uh, who else do you have there? You have, uh, uh, like I said, uh, uh, Beta Edu, Beta Edu, national women leader, another politician, you know, one of the youngest uh, people serve as commissioner in uh, Cr Cross River State for Health, was uh, special advisor on health to the governor before. Uh, Better as a prominent feature here. You have Anato Musawa. Anato Musawa has a degree in law from Buckingham University. Then you have Governor Yusum Wiki. You know, been governor for eight years, former minister of state for education. And you wonder, okay, we thought we we're going to see very, you know, fresh faith technocrats and all of that. But hey, uh, what do we know? You have Abaka Kiari, the acting uh, chairman of the APC, is also in there. Uh, you have uh, uh, Stella Kuchete. Stella Kuchete. Uh, used to be ED of uh, Nexim Bank. And uh, you remember the back and forth when she was make ED then, you know, as regards uh, qualification and positioning and things like that. You also remember that we have other people there that you look. But anyway, in Kiruka Yajocha, you know, former deputy minority leader, House of Rep, another politician there, good women representation. Part of it is about seven women up there. Uh, two uh, currently seven senators, if my memory serves me right. Uh, well, only Omai is a seven senator. Uh, yeah, that is there. And you have a part of other people, mostly politicians and all of that. But people argue to a very large extent. We're expecting technocrats that, you know, have never been seen before. People that could be given a chance. But you have a mix of politicians and all of that. But, hey, fingers crossed. But the part I'm not really down with is the part that we're not putting portfolios so that the Senate knows how to screen them, so that we know the questions to ask them. So there are possible questions, frequently asked questions we want to ask. And I hope the Senate's not going to go on this tirade or just take a bow. Uh, probably, you know, you want to hear them say, take a bow for people like Omahi because they're already in the Senate. I, I think that's not right. I think we should be able to ask them due questions. And, and next time, probably we'll put port portfolios. But that's not a complete list. Uh, let's see when the remainder of the names are added. But <sighs> I'm not pumped up. Not pumped up. Right. Okay, <clears throat> I don't agree <clears throat> with those who say that this ministerial list, 28 names submitted, uh, Chief of Staff Baja Biamela says uh, 13 more names will be sent, which means that President Chinubu is looking at a total of 41 names. Second, we have also been told by Femi Baja Biamela, the Chief of Staff, that <clears throat> the ministries, you know, new ministries will be created, which means there will be a lot of juggling. So I started by saying I don't agree with those who say that this is a collection of serpents and vultures. Um, I think a more objective view, uh, you know, would be to take a balanced view of that list. And I will categorize that. Out of the 28 names, seven were women, right? Yes. About 25%. And if you look at all the women that have been chosen, they are women who have quality experience. In Kiruka, Uyejucha, had been a four-time member of the House of Representatives. When the PDP was not going to give her the ticket in 2019, she moved to the APC and won. So she has significant experience. Ima Suleiman Ibrahim had been uh, a special advisor. Uh, she has had public office, so it's not as if she's new to it. Anna Tumusawa has an LLM in oil and gas, 
as she's been in politics. She's been involved uh, in the campaign as a spokesperson uh, for the campaign. Doris Uzoka, you know, is also uh, not just coming from, uh, uh, from nowhere. So you see that pattern. Doris Suzoka, for example, has been commissioner in, uh, I think, Imo State. Now, uh, Stella Okotete has been uh, appointed uh, director, I think, business development at Nathan Bank twice. When she was reappointed in 2019, there was uh, some complaint. I think one uh, online, uh, you know, uh, uh, publication saying, oh, she's not qualified. But when you check uh, her profile, you see that, you know, she's very well educated and she has significant experience, uh, you know, of more than 23 years. Ucho Kennedy, you know, was the only female uh, presidential aspirant uh, who referred to Tinubu as, his, as her daddy as she was stepping down. Well, I don't know her profile. Dr. Beta Edu has been a commissioner uh, for health in uh, Cross River State. She's also been the uh, woman leader of the uh, APC, and she's highly qualified. Okay? Above all, she's a Malabres, a product of the University of uh, Calabar. You see, uh, Malabites and Malabreses are showing up everywhere, so you don't expect me to uh, criticize our choice. In other words, the seven women, you know, that are on that place. There's none of them that you can throw away. So what you see, the pattern that you see with these women is that President Tinubu is looking for people who have experience, not people who are going to come and learn on the job. Because if you become a minister, one of the problems we used to have is that people will be made minister. They don't know how the public service works. By the time you review their budget performance later in the year, you see that budget performance is about 20%, 30%. One, two years in the position, they are just beginning to learn the ropes. But these ones have had quality experience. That's the list of uh, the ladies on that place. Now let's look at the former governors. Four of them. Uh, Nasi Arafai. He has experience. You may not agree with his uh, politics, but he has experience and he's a well-educated man. You may not agree with his style, but he knows the territory. Take, uh, if you move from uh, Nasi Arafai, go to uh, Governor David Umayi. Governor David Umayi has been a two-term uh, governor in uh, Ebony State. So it's not as if a novice is coming to the job. Okay, but what I don't know is whether the uh, uh, Governor David Umai, former Governor of Ebony State, is going to leave his seat in the Senate to go and be a minister. If I were to advise him, I would tell him to politely turn down the offer and stay in the Senate, where he can use his uh, experience to contribute to uh, uh, discussions. I don't think he will be one of those senators who will go there to sleep. So he should be satisfied with that. Take a year some wicked. Well, yes, some wicked uh, emergence on that list is controversial. But give it to him. He has some wicked, has experience. You may also not like his politics. You may not like his style. He has been uh, chairman of a local government. He has been minister of state. He has been governor. He has been everywhere. But you may query his style and all of that. And the PDP is saying, oh, good riddance to bad rubbish. And that if he's given a position, you know, uh, they will know what to do. But in terms of experience, again, there's a case to be made for him. The same argument can be uh, uh, presented with regard to uh, Badaru Abubakar. Uh, who was very supportive of Governor Tinubu during the campaigns. And you will see that, okay, in his own case, yes, he also has experience also. Who else is there? And then another thing I see in that list is the attempt to include youths. Olubome Tunjojo, uh, who is on that list, was born in 1982. The young man is just uh, 41. But he has good qualifications. Uh, Better I do, who is the youngest on the list, is 36. Stella Okotete uh, is 39. So these are very young people that, uh, you know, uh, President Tinubu is trying to bring, uh, you know, on board. So on the whole, however, there are some political people there, political jobs for the boys. Okay, you may query that because some of the uh, people on that list, you query where they are coming from. But there are concrete technocrats. Mr. Deli Alake has been uh, in journalism for the whole of his life, from radio to print to being commissioner to uh, politics. So you can't question his capacity. You may not like his style, but you can't question his competence. Why is it Wally Edun you want to question? Nobody can question Wally Edun, uh, uh, you know, uh, as a technocrat, credentials as a technocrat. Or is it Latif Fagbemi, one of the leading lawyers in this, uh, in this uh, country, one of the products, I think, of uh, Afe Babalola, Chief Afe Babalola's chambers, who has been doing very well, you know, and then he went on to, to, to establish Latif Fagbemi and co. As Attorney General of the Federation, if that is the portfolio he's given, you cannot question his, uh, uh, his cre credentials. Or is it Mohammed Idris, publisher of Blueprint, 
who is coming from a background of uh, journalism, or is it Adegoke Adelabu, who, apart from having a strong pedigree, you know, has also had very good experience in preparing for for office. Mohammed Ali Party. He has been Minister of State. He's one of the leading intellectuals in his field, not just in Nigeria, but also internationally. But there are some politicians there, as I said, that you may say, well, these ones have been rewarded. Uh, like the man that ran for governorship in uh, Enugu State and Field, and some other ones who are probably, who are probably being compensated uh, for their contribution uh, for missing out opportunities. But on the whole, I think it's a fair list. But we also, but we also look forward to the remaining 13 names. And we also hope that uh, the president will rethink the refusal to attach portfolios. The argument put on by the chief of staff doesn't make sense to me. He, he says the president needs to be given room to tinker with the list as he wishes. Didn't he think through the list before sending it to the uh, Senate? People should uh, cut us some slack and know that they are talking to intelligent people to come and be given excuses that will not fly. But in any case, the president has fulfilled section 147, sub 2 of the 1999 constitution. We hope that the governors will follow suit. Because some governors have also not announced their lists. They should hurry up. Well, I believe that now that the president has announced his list, some governors will be free to announce their own list um, now, at least announce his special list. But uh, just as has been said, when you want to give, if one could give a name to this ministerial list, it would be a list of, as has been, technocrats and um, some old names, so a recycling of some names that we are perhaps used to. In some cases as well, no surprises with the, with the names we've seen there. No surprise to see Mr. Adelia Lake there, even though it looks like he's been given a promotion from being SA. A few promotions there, uh, Mr. Adelia Lake, uh, Mr. Hannah Tumusawa, Mr. Wale Adun, who move from being SA there, if they, if they do pass through the ministerial screening to becoming um, substantive ministers. Also, as has been praised, we must look at it. There's been a lot of spotlight on the women. And perhaps it's because during his campaign, the president had said he was going to apply the 35% affirmation to include more women in his government. And so you can imagine how a number of people have x-rayed um, the women in his cabinet or his potential cabinet and also their qualifications, not just a tick box, not just to um, have women in his cabinet, but to see that they are women of timber and caliber. So I really would applaud that. 25% of this list um, of the, um, of the uh, 28 names are women. In 2019, President Muhammad Buhari appointed the same number of women, seven women, out of 42 ministers, 17%. So this is an improvement in terms of the representation of women in this particular cabinet. And as already been mentioned, it's also important to note that majority of the young people so um, nominated are women. Uh, um, Dr. Beta Edu was the youngest uh, female uh, leader, women's leader of the APC, and now has emerged as the youngest minister in this particular list. Congratulations to her. And she's not just there by virtue of being an APC chieftain, but also because of her record. You know, she's been um, Commissioner of Health in, in, in Cross River State and was actually the president of the Commissioners of Health in the Federation at some point. So she comes with experience. And then, uh, very importantly, Miss uh, Iman Suleiman Ibrahim was the DG of NAPTIP and recorded a few, uh, a number of successes during her tenure. So that's something to definitely center on. Proud of um, Honorable Inkiruka Onye Jocha, who has served, who has been in politics for a while. It's often said, um, who is a ranking house of the a member of the House. And it's often said that women, we, you, you have to search really deep to find Nigerian women in politics, but it's great to see her bring her experience to bear. Um, a number of, while, while some people might be dis disappointed with this list, is because we also do see a number of, even though, yes, they might be said to be technocrats, but recycled names. And so the question then begs that, are these the only people who can serve in Nigeria? Are these the only names that can come up? Hence, it then looks as if the president is trying to compensate or still moving, you know, not moving away with the old as is expected. This is renewed hope government. And so what people are hoping for is some form of fresh blood injected into the leadership of the nation. We don't want to see recycled names. We don't want to see governors, yes, who have done quite well in, in service, but in terms of outstanding, perhaps not. It's often said that the reward for good work is more work. So if you're going to give people, if you're going to appoint them again, then it must be that they were exceptional, outstanding um, while serving as governors. But, you know, there, there are a number of um, your perspectives differ on this particular matter. Yes, um, former governor Nasser El Rufai has 
done quite well in terms of his tenure in government. But we must also remember the agitations of the South and Northern, um, the Southern Kaduna, the killings there, and some of the criticisms they had while he was in office. So yes, he's a loyalist of the president, but some people might be a bit skeptical about, about his appointment. Governor Dave Umayi as well, um, in terms of his um, track record, a lot of times people talk about the fact that he's a Tinubu loyalist. We want people who are more than loyalists, people who have served, and it is clear that they have served excellently. We're looking forward again, as has been said, to the um, next... The, the so guys, no doubt you have seen it for yourself that we have so many politicians that are not even supposed to, you know, near government at this time that the Nigerian people are seeking for, you know, change, real change. We don't need these old people. We just need them retired. But you can still see that these people, this political class, they will just keep destroying Nigeria. Tinubu is just trying to emulate Buhari's government and nothing more. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Thank you.